Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Harry Potter. Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Chuck Bartowski from the TV show Chuck. What do all these characters have in common? A long, long time ago, at an academic institution far, far away, there was a guy named Joseph Campbell. He studied mythology his entire career. He wrote a lot of books, did a lot of research, was very, very prolific. And he found out that almost all mythological structures, no matter where they come from, no matter when they come from, have the same basic structure. All mythological stories from around the world, going all the way back since they started recording them, have the same basic structure. And he called this the monomyth. This is more commonly referred to as the hero's journey. The best way to understand the structure of the hero's journey is through the very first Star Wars movie. Why the very first Star Wars movie? <clears throat> Because George Lucas, when he had his basic idea, he hired Joseph Campbell to make sure his story was put into the structure of this ancient mythological storytelling device that seems to resonate with us on a very ancient, instinctive level. And maybe that's why Star Wars was such a runaway success. It came out of nowhere, and it was poof, immediately successful. And so if we look at the structure of Star Wars, the very first Star Wars, this is this right structure of the hero's journey. And the hero's journey is in three basic phases. The first stage is called the orphan stage because the hero is almost always an orphan. Luke Skywalker was an orphan. Harry Potter was an orphan. Peter Parker was an orphan. Dorothy from Wizard of Oz was an orphan. Chuck Bartowski from the TV show Chuck is an orphan. And during this orphan phase, the hero knows there's a much more exciting life out there. They're living at home with their aunt and uncle usually. Their life is safe, but their life is kind of boring. They know there's something better out there, but they're not quite confident enough to go out on their own to get that more exciting life. They even sing songs about somewhere over the rainbow where life doesn't suck so bad. But then they transition from the orphan stage to what's called the wandering hero stage. And they are forced out of their safe comfort zone by some external event. They get sucked out of their farm by a tornado. The stormtroopers come and kill everybody. They get bit by a radioactive spider. A giant comes to their house and says, Harry, you're a wizard, come with me. Their friend from college sends them an email that secretly implants the intersect into their brain, a secret CIA tool, like in the TV show Chuck Bartowski. And so they're on this wandering phase, and they know they're supposed to do something. They have this kind of vague feeling that they have this big purpose in life, that there's something they need to do, but they're not quite sure what that is. They usually have some kind of tool they need to use, they meet some friends, and they kind of stumble along. Remember the scene in Star Wars where Luke was first on the, the Millennium Falcon, and he had that blaster on, and he had his lightsaber, and he was trying to use the force, and he kept getting the crap kicked out of him by that machine. <laughs> or when Peter Parker first got his spider web, he kept missing all over the place. Or when Harry and his friends went to Hogwarts, and they kept missing each other with their wands and doing the wrong spells. Or Dorothy and her friends were wandering through the forest, wondering what was going on, worrying about lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. But then something happens, and they transition from the wandering hero phase to the warrior hero phase. They've spent some time on the wandering hero phase, and they have some kind of skills. They have some friendships that are worth fighting for, worth protecting. And they realize there's some big monster out there they need to confront. Some villain, some demon, some antagonist. And the villain knows there's a fight coming. The hero knows there's a fight coming. And the audience knows there's a fight coming. And usually somewhere along the wandering hero phase, 
or the warrior hero phase, there's two important plot points. The first one is what Joseph Campbell called the belly of the whale, named after Jonah who physically went into the belly of the whale. This is usually symbolized in the story as the hero being physically inside some kind of enclosed space where they have to face some kind of monster. This is a metaphor that describes that we cannot face the outer demons until we confront our inner demons. If you remember the second Star Wars, Luke had to go into the cave to face Darth Vader, which was really himself, which was really his father. That was his inner demon. Or Hercules had to go down to hell to complete the 12 tasks before he could level up. If you remember Silence of the Lambs with Clarice, another orphan, when she went to capture Buffalo Bill, the FBI were at the wrong house. She was in Buffalo Bill's house with no backup. Buffalo Bill had night vision. She was just by herself in the dark. That was a fantastic representation of a belly of the whale experience where the hero faces their own inner demons and then levels up afterwards. My favorite example of a belly of the whale experience is Gandalf the Grey when he led everyone through what was a metaphor for hell and he had to face off against that demon that shall not pass. And after he shall not let that demon pass, or after that demon was not allowed to pass, he leveled up from Gandalf the Grey to Gandalf the White. And that's what happens when you confront your inner demons. You level up and you can go into the world and kill the demon. The other plot point is when the hero realizes that killing the demon is their purpose. That's why they are alive. That's why they exist. That's why they have learned all their skills. And when they come face to face with their demon, there's some kind of representation of the idea that killing the demon is more important than life itself. Where the hero thinks to himself and says, one of us is going to die today. This is when Harry Potter, if you remember, you're not supposed to say Voldemort's name before he killed him. He didn't just say Voldemort, he said his real name, Tom Riddle, and he killed him. This is the kind of take one for the team. And after the hero kills the demon, he goes back to his society. He's leveled up. He gets a medal from Princess Leia. He gets elevated somehow, and everyone recognizes him as a true hero who has saved society. <clears throat> so the question is, why do we resonate with this story so much, this story structure? Because once you understand this structure, you'll start to see it everywhere. Why do we resonate so much with this story structure? Why is it so compelling? One theory is that this is the ideal structure to tell little kids in a hunter-gatherer environment. We've been humans for 100, 200,000 years. We've had large societies for maybe four or 5,000 years. We've had modern communication for maybe 100, 150 years. And so we really are internally still wired like hunter-gatherers. And so if you think of the life of a hunter-gatherer, it's perfect for the hero's journey story. They're a little kid, they're safe, they kind of feel like orphans because most of the time all the dudes are out hunting and they may be gone for a week or two. It's safe but it's boring. But then a time comes where they have to be productive. They can't just be a kid and, and live off others' productivity. And that's when a lot of ancient tribes forced their children to go through coming-of-age ceremonies. So they're forced from the orphan stage into the wandering hero stage. And that's where they wander around. They have new tools. They learn new skills. They meet new people. They learn how to hunt. And then when they transition into the warrior phase, that's when they see these big tracks of this ginormous animal. And if they can catch this animal and kill this animal, they can feed the tribe for a month. And so that's when the big fight is brewing, the animal, the hero. And when the animal comes face to face with this ginormous woolly mammoth that he's got to kill with a spear, he has that surge of confidence. One of us is going to die today. And if he can kill that woolly mammoth, bring it back to his tribe, everyone celebrates. Another theory as to why this story structure is so compelling is because it reminds us of what it was like to be born. We're in the womb, it's safe, it's comfortable. Some Something forces us out against our will. We go into this new world. We have to learn all these skills, meet all these people. And that cycle repeats over and over and over again. Comfort zone, forced outside, learn new skills, kill the monster, level up. Comfort zone, forced outside, learn new skills, kill the monster, level up. Learning to walk, learning to talk, going to school, going to junior high school, high school, maybe college, getting married, having a family. 
having a career, this cycle repeats over and over and over again. And ultimately, I think the main reason why this story structure is so compelling is because as described in Joseph Campbell's first book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, is that the hero in all these stories reminds us of us. Thank you.